Hey, we all have those days where there just aren't enough hours, but you still wanna do something to better your physical and mental health. When you pull up your plan workout, how do you know what you can skip while still hitting the most important parts? So let's break it down. First and foremost, don't stress about not doing everything perfectly. One workout is not going to derail your progress. Showing up consistently is half the battle. But while you're here, let's make it easier to train by arming you with confidence about what to prioritize first. Never skip prep, and here's why. Being short on time means rushing through your day and probably feeling stressed. Holding on to tension in your body, having your mind in a million places, and trying to get through training on the clock all heighten the risk of injury or a tweak that will set you back. Prep work doesn't have to be long to be effective, and these few minutes will help your body and brain settle in and get ready for the work ahead. You're gonna warm your core temperature, you're gonna send blood and nutrients to the muscles that you'll be using, and start to groove movement patterns for the day. Plus, it gives you a chance to set your worries aside and become present to your body. If your workout doesn't come with a warm up, start with a few minutes on a cardio machine at an easy pace. Or my favorite, pushing and pulling a sled back and forth for about five minutes. Next, I want you to look at the movements in the rest of your workout and perform a similar pattern with a band, with body weight, or with an empty barbell. For example, in an upper body workout with pushing and pulling, I might pair up half kneeling landmine presses at a light weight for 12 on each side, along with 20 to 25 banded tricep pushdowns for two total sets. Okay, my second tip, you definitely want to do something for strength. Resistance training is a non-negotiable in my book. Unless I'm doing a purely aerobic session and will do a strength piece later on. I'm not the type of guy who will roll in just to hit the Metcon. I'm more interested in visible muscle, strength, and stability built through high quality resistance training reps. It's quite tempting to think that a high intensity workout like the classic CrossFit workout Fran did something really special for you because you felt so much pain and you were writhing on the floor. But what I'd rather see is you use that intensity for a strength superset and then walk out the door with a massive pump. So consider your strength work the main meat of your training meal. And the more intensity that you bring, the more thorough your warm-up should be. So don't cut corners here. And if you need some more prep or a couple extra sets to work up, take it. I'll show you a couple shortcuts you can take after this part. Now, ideally your absolute strength work will be a superset to get two lifts in efficiently. And your last couple of sets should be around eight or nine out of 10 on your RPE or rate of perceived exertion scale. Close to failure, but without the form breaking down. An example for my Pump 40 program is three sets, dumbbell bench press, alternating with RNT single arm dumbbell rows. You get push and pull, bilateral and unilateral, all within a few minutes. Okay, my third tip, make sure to finish on a high note. At this point, you're clocking in at around 30 minutes or even less. So let's bring it home with some more high quality muscle contractions, either in the form of strength balance, conditioning, or both. When I write short on time notes for my persist pump track, that takes the workout from roughly 75 to 90 minutes down to about an hour or less, based on how this last section of training is prioritized. The main idea is to either finish with strength balance work to incorporate unilateral training, isolation, and or accessory lifts, or get in a short functional pump conditioning style workout or do a little bit of both. As an example, to round out a push and pull session, I'd include a giant set rotating between three movements, an archer push-up, biasing one arm at a time for unilateral strength, single arm body rows working off the same thing, and an extended wall plank for 45 seconds to work that core and the upper body. Three sets of that is all you need to finish strong. Finally, here's my bonus time tip to make sure you get out the door on schedule. One of the most stressful parts of being up against the clock 
is being absolutely certain that you can finish in time to get to that Zoom call with your boss, pick up your kids, or whatever that thing is that's on your schedule that's gonna ruin your workout and your day if you don't get it right. That's one reason I frequently use timed formats like EMOMs. That stands for every minute on the minute. Or when the sets take longer, there's more rest needed, I'll use a format like every three minutes on the three minute or even every 90 seconds on the 90 second. Grab your equipment and go. The rest periods will be built in so you won't need to fear getting sucked into your phone between sets. And if a buddy wanders over to chat, you'll have an excuse to stay on task. In summary, prioritize your prep and get a couple strong sets of strength work in. Then finish your workout with some quality reps that are enjoyable and send you off feeling better for the time that you put in. When you have a little know-how, you'll be more confident that you won't miss anything too important if you need to change things on the fly and come back even stronger for the next round.